Welcome to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, October 23rd, 2022. I am Rev. Mary Tillman, an Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. The fall quarter study is God's Exceptional Choice. We're in Unit 2, and our theme is Out of Slavery to Nationhood. This is Lesson Number 4 in Unit Number 2. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is, Who is King? And in the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is, We Want a Human King. Our devotional reading, Psalm 93. The background scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1-9, through 9, and 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 17-26. through 26. The print passage, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4, verses 4 through 7, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 17 through 24. Our key verse, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 19a, from the NIV Bible it reads, You have now rejected your God, who saves you out of all your disasters and calamities, and you have said, No, appoint a king over us. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our minds so that we may learn and understand the benefit of seeking your will for our lives. Thank you for loving us in spite of our disregard for the plans that you have for our lives. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Looking at our lesson's introduction, God had a threefold purpose for leading Israel to the promised land. First, was to fulfill the promise that he had made to Abraham to give his descendants the land as an inheritance. And we read about that in Genesis 12, verse 7. Second, God wanted to judge the Canaanites for the idolatrous practices and other evils. And thirdly, the conquest of Canaan was God's means of protecting Israel from the Canaanites' ungodly influence. The lessons of this quarter traces the arc of salvation history from Abraham to Jesus and on to the early church. The five lessons in this unit, Out of Slavery to Nationhood, explore the call of Israel's family out of Egypt to become a nation. Today's lesson chronicles the transition in Israel's history from the governess of judges to the selection of Saul as Israel's first king. So, get your Sunday school book, your Bible, pen and a notepad and follow along as we go forward with this wonderful lesson. Let's get started. Our lesson title is, We Want a Human King. There are three questions to consider. One, what motivated Israel's elders to request a human king? Question number two, what does Samuel say to the people about God's faithfulness? And question number three, why is having spiritual discernment important in the choices we make? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. 1 Samuel is a description of the transition of Israel's leadership from judges to kings. Samuel emerges as the last judge and he anoints the first two kings, King Saul and King David. The book of 1 Samuel is divided into two sections, the life of Samuel in chapters 1 through 12 and the life of Saul chapters 13 through 31. Samuel was the son of Elkanah and Hannah. You may recall that Hannah was barren and she prayed to the Lord for a male child. And if he would bless her with the son, she made a vow to dedicate and give him back to the Lord. You can read this in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Samuel was dedicated to God's service by his mother Hannah. After he was weaned, Hannah took Samuel and presented him to Eli, 
a judge and a priest to serve in the house of the Lord. Samuel lived and served with Eli in the temple. When Eli died, Samuel assumed the role of judge and leader of Israel. He became one of Israel's greatest prophets. He was a man of prayer. Samuel was a good man and a godly man. Samuel lived during a period of tremendous turmoil in Israel. Samuel was the first recognized prophet in Israel and the transitional leader between the period of the judges and the beginning of the Hebrew monarchy. The people rejected the leadership of the judges and the priests and they clamored for a king like all the other nations. They wanted to be set up and be like the surrounding nations. The book of Samuel presents Israel's history at a low point in her spirituality. A degenerative priesthood, idolatry, corrupt judges, and the absence of the Ark of the Covenant from the tabernacle characterize this period. Samuel, the last judge, along with David, is credited with reversing these conditions. Theologically, 1 Samuel's focus is on God's faithfulness to his promises despite humanity's rebellion and sin. The events in this lesson occur when Israel's elders demanded of the aged prophet Samuel to relinquish his leadership over Israel in favor of a human king. Let's look at the aims for this week's lesson. They are... Understand why the Israelites rejected God as their king and sought a human king whom they could see. Sense your selfishness in seeking a quick solution to life's problems instead of trusting God. And pray for God's help to trust God as your only true king and ruler. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is association begets assimilation. The second outline is biting the hand that feeds. The third outline is looks are deceiving. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, association begets assimilation. That we'll find that in 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 4 through 7. 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 1, Samuel is described as an old man. He had appointed his sons to be his successor and be the judges in Israel. The problem was his sons were not following in his footsteps. They were corrupt and dishonest. The appointment of Samuel's sons to be over Israel had been a disaster. Samuel observed this same type of behavior in Eli's sons. His sons were mistreating God's people and sacrifices. Regretfully, Samuel's sons turned away from God. They took bribes and were stealing from people and perverted justice. They were given over to corruption. Their objective was personal gain rather than pleasing God. The elders of the people had seen enough and came to Samuel's home to denounce his sons. They accused Samuel's sons of failure to live up to the standards of their father. The elders came to Samuel and demanded that a king be set to lead them so they could be like the other nations. Key point number one, Israel wanted a king. This is exactly what God did not want. God warned the Israelites against association with the Canaanites, knowing that their influence would create a desire for them to assimilate and be like them. Verses 4 and 5 read, So the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. Verse 6 says, But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel, so he prayed to the Lord. Samuel was sorely displeased with the request of the elders. 
He saw this as a personal attack on his leadership. He took it personally. Samuel felt rejected personally, perhaps because of his age and what his sons had done. In response to the elders' request, Samuel prayed to the Lord for guidance and support. Samuel sought the Lord. Verse 7 says, And the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. God is saying, Samuel, it's not about you. They're rejecting me. God said, it's all about me. They don't want me ruling over them. They don't want me ruling over their lives. Their request for a king was an act of rebellion against God. Key point number two. God instructed Samuel to follow through on the people's request for a king. There will be repercussions for their request. It's going to cost them greatly. We must be careful what we ask God for, especially if it is not in his timing or if it's not in his will. The Israelites wanted laws, an army, and a human monarch in the place of God. They wanted to run the nation through human strength rather than God. The people no longer wanted judges, so they clamored for a king. Having a king would make it easier to forget God was their real leader. The nations around them were idol worshipers. They would rather have people rule over their lives than have God as their supreme ruler. Israel became blind to God's faithfulness and unconditional love. The demand to imitate the other nations was the problem. The saying, association begets assimilation, is what we see in this week's lesson with the Israelites. Israel's fascination with the pagan people of Canaan and wanting to be like them proves this point. Their association with the Canaanite neighbors had negatively influenced the behavior and their desires. The faith community is surrounded by many gods that continually threaten the possibility of an intimate relationship with God. As believers, we must earnestly seek spiritual discernment to identify those worldly practices and spiritual counterfeits that will compromise our walk before God. Outline number two, biting the hand that feeds. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verses 17 through 19a. After the people's initial request for a human king was heard, Samuel sent them home and later called them to reassemble by tribes at Mizpah to publicly proclaim Saul as their king. Verse 17 reads, Samuel summoned the people of Israel to the Lord at Mizpah and said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought Israel up out of Egypt, and I delivered you from the power of Egypt and all the kingdoms that oppressed you. Key point number one. Samuel reminds the people of God's faithfulness. In verse 18, Samuel uses this as an opportunity to speak to the people and remind them of God's continual faithfulness to them. It was God alone, not political power, that brought Israel out of Egyptian enslavement and deliverance from other nations who tried to oppress them. Despite what they had known and seen concerning God and what God had done for them, they callously and foolishly bit the hand that fed them. Key point number two, Israel rejects God. Verse 19a says, But you have now rejected your God, who saves you out of all your disasters and calamities, and you have said, No, appoint a king over us. God instructed Samuel to follow through on the people's request for a king. God chose Saul, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, to reign as king of Israel. Saul was appointed as the first king king and the people suffered under his leadership. His selection was God's judgment against Israel for rejecting his spiritual leadership for a political king. 
God knew Saul's innate character and tendency toward rebellion. Often, God allows us to have what we want to discipline us and direct us back to him. Throughout history, men and women have neglected and rejected God, and they continue to do it today. Lest we criticize the Israelites for their folly, let us evaluate our loyalty to God amid the lure of outside gratification and security in today's world. Are we guilty of putting more trust into human relationships more often than in God? When we choose to follow the world's standards over God's standards or fail to acknowledge his goodness with continuous expressions of gratitude, we become guilty of dethroning God to enthroning ourselves. Let me say that again. When we choose to follow the world's standards over God's standards or when we fail to acknowledge his goodness with continuous expressions of gratitude, we become guilty of dethroning God and enthroning ourselves. Outline number three. Looks are deceiving. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verses 19b through 24. The tribes assembled at Mizpah were unaware that Samuel had previously anointed Saul as their king by God's command. 1 Samuel chapter 9 verses 17 reads, When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, There he is, the man of whom I spoke to you. This one shall reign over my people. Verse 19b reads, So now present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and clans. Verse 20 when Samuel had all Israel come forward by tribes, the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. The casting of lots was used in ancient Hebrew society as a means to determine what the will of God was in a particular manner or a particular situation. Verse 21 reads, Then he brought forward the tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan, and Matri's clan was taken. Finally, Saul son of Kish was taken, but when they looked for him, he was not to be found. Key point number one, God chooses a king. The scriptures say the tribes passed by and from the tribe of Benjamin, the son of Kish was chosen. God chose Saul, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, to reign as king of Israel. Verses 22 and 23 read, So they inquired further of the Lord, Has the man come here yet? And the Lord said, Yes, he has hidden himself among the supplies. They ran and brought him out, and as he stood among the people, he was a head taller than all of the others. Saul is described as a young man taller than all of the other people assembled. He was strong and handsome. And verse 24 reads, Samuel said to all the people, Do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. Then the people shouted, Long live the king! Publicly, Samuel proclaimed Saul as the king whom God chose and presented him to the people. Key point number two. First impressions can be deceiving. Their demand for a human king was satisfied, but looks can be deceiving. They are never a valid or reliable qualification for serving God. Saul's attractive physique was a sharp contrast to his unappealing inner character. God's permissive will granted them King Saul in their rebellion and rejection of him. God does not choose people according to our expectations. He may not even choose the one best qualified for the task, but rather the one who will fulfill his larger purpose. Sometimes this allows a poor leader to be selected to teach people a valuable lesson as it was with Saul. Walking by sight and not by faith is synonymous with judging a book by its cover and neglecting to examine its contents. 
The people's choice will take them further away from following the king they rejected. However, Saul was God's choice to be the king. In summary, the nation of Israel was guilty of allowing itself to be negatively influenced by what it saw among the Canaanite nations. Instead of being grateful to and satisfied with God, Israel was unwisely fascinated by the idol gods and the Canaanites' political and social ways instead of God's ways. The children of Israel wanted someone to lead who would enable them to identify with the nations around them. There are times when the people of God are driven more by their own desires than by the word and will of God. We have to be careful about choosing someone for leadership based on outer appearance or their level of education or upon some superficial quality that may not reflect the will of God. Are we basing our selection on physical qualities or character qualities? How often do you consult God before making your decisions? How many of them are influenced by others instead of God and his word? How many decisions do you base on self-interest rather than on the will of God? This lesson led me to think about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. When we're making decisions, when we're choosing leaders, when we're choosing what to do, which way to go, what job to take, what interview we should go on, what assignment should we take on, We need to trust God. Man makes his plans, but God orders his steps. We must remember that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So many times we go off what we see instead of going off what God is telling us. The spirit of discernment is very much needed in this day and time. I hope you've gotten a great thought out of this lesson and it will allow you to remember the faithfulness of God and how we should be grateful and appreciative of all that the Lord has done in spite of all the negative things that are going on. There is so much that we can be grateful for and the faithfulness of God cannot be replaced by anybody. That's our lesson for today. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for grace and mercy. Please forgive our tendency to allow others to influence our decisions by sharing our thoughts and desires with them instead of consulting you. Help us to remember if we seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, all these things that we're looking for will be added unto us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh, fall fresh on me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.